In this episode, we are going to solve this example. And I would like you to subscribe to the channel, like, and comment on the video. So this is an engineering problem, and we are going to try our hands on it. 3D resolution of forces. Very simple. So this is the question. The boom, OA, carries a load, P, and is supported by two cables as shown. So this is boom, OA, and it is being supported by these two cables, AC and AB as cables supporting it. Knowing that the tension in cable AB is 183 newtons, so the tension in cable AB is 183 newtons, and that the resultant of the load P and of the forces exerted at A by the two cables must be directed along OA. So since there is tension in AC and tension in AB, they are all forces, and this force P, the resultant of these three forces lies along this line, which is the boom, OA. That's what we are saying here. Now, determine the tension in cable AC. Are we okay? We have to find the tension in cable AC. So let's try our hands on this. This is an interesting question. So how do we go by it? First, let's write down our parameters that will help us to solve the question. So our solution, we are given a load P, so we know that our load is P. What again, we have let tension in AB be TAB. We will let the tension in cable AB be TAB, meaning tension in AB, and that one is equal to 183 newtons. Are we okay? And we will also let the tension in AC be TAC, and we don't know the value. Are we okay? So these are some small parameters we can list. So what do we do next? We also know that we have to resolve the forces in the tension cables. So the force in this cable, the force in this cable before we can do any analysis. Are we okay? So in this 3D, we know that the force, which is the vector force that we are looking for, for the 3D in this tension cables is going to be the force multiplying a certain lambda, where this lambda is giving us the direction we took of the force, so the direction of the force over the magnitude. The magnitude. Are we okay? So we can resolve the force and find its magnitude as well. So let's start with cable AC. How do we resolve the force, the vector force in cable AC? So here, this force F. In cable AC is going to be the same as the tension in AC. Are we good? So what we know is, and this force is going to be tension in the vector tension force, which is equal to this F, which is TAC, and this lambda of AC. Are we good? So we can start to find lambda for AC which is the direction we are going to take from the origin to the position of the base of the wire. So here we are starting from this point A. To get to this point, we must move on the X, move on this Z, and move a certain distance on the Y to get here. Are we good? So what do we do? So on the X, we are going to move against the axis. Remember, the axis can be extended to this form. So we are moving against the axis in this direction, and that is a negative. So meaning we are going to get a negative 
and it is 48. On the x is denoted as i. And once we get here, we will move a certain distance up. And this distance is 25. This is in the direction of the force or the axis y. And that is going to be positive 25. And the y is j. Now we get here the 25 where we are to move another distance to get to the base. And this is on the z axis. We are moving against it. This is the z axis. We are moving against it by 36. That will be a negative 36k for the lambda, the direction of the force. So everything on the magnitude, which is going to be the square root of negative 48 square plus 25 square plus negative 36 square. This way, are we okay? So here we can further reduce this as lambda AC is equal to negative 48i plus 25j minus 36k. And I can punch everything under the bracket or the square root, and that is going to be square root of this is going to give me 4. Two two five. Are we okay? So we have this. We can reduce this to AC as negative forty eight I plus twenty five J minus thirty six K. Everything on the root of this is going to be sixty five, and that'll be. 65 for the lambda ac so now to get the vector force tac which is equal to now we are going to we don't know the value for the tension ac so we are going to multiply tension ac by negative 48 on 65 i plus 25 on 65 j minus 36 on 65k for that. So this is our equation one for the tension in AC. We've expressed it in the vector form. Now we can also consider cable AB. Are we okay? Cable AB. In order not to confuse us, let me try it here and we move to the next page. So for cable A, B, we are going to follow the same trend and that is going to be tension in A, B, which is the vector 1, equal to tension A, B by lambda A, B. So this is lambda A, B. Pay attention. This is lambda A, B. So we can also find the lambda A, B as where we move from the point A to B and the distance, we move again on the X and it is again, so that will be a negative 48I. We will also move, once we get here, we will go up by 29 and that is in the direction of Y, so 29 positive J. Once we get to the 29, we have to move this way. This is in the direction of the Z, so it will be positive. And this is 24, the dimension, plus 24K. So this is the distance we are going to move. This is over the square root of negative 48 square plus 29 square plus 24 square. So lambda AB is going to give us when you punch everything under the square root, this is going to be negative 48i on 61 plus 29 on 61. This is j plus this is 24 on 61k. So we can 
bring and establish this equation, which is TAB lambda AB. We already have lambda AB, and we know TAB also as 183. Are we okay? So our TAB is going to be 183 multiplying the whole thing here, which is negative 48 on 61 I plus 29 on 61 J plus 24 on 61 K this way. So this can be reduced. You can multiply through to get our TAB is going to be, when you multiply this by that, you're going to get negative 1, 4, 4 for the I. When you multiply by the J, you're going to get plus 87J. And by the K, that will give you 72K. This is equation 2. Are we okay? So now we've established the force in cable AC as equation 1. The force in AB as equation 2. There's another external force here, which is P. So we must also establish for P. Are we okay? Based on the same approach here. So here we can do the usual. So for the P, for the P that we did, we can, from the diagram, we can switch back and check for the diagram. The P is the same thing, going to be the force, which is P. We don't know the magnitude multiplying. The direction of the P is towards this axis, which is the y and p direction is in the negative direction of the y so this is going to be a negative pg the force p is towards the negative axis of g and that is negative p are we good okay so what do we do now to find the resultant we've resolved all the three forces we have to find the resultant the resultant force, which is, I'll call the resultant force FR, the vector force of that. And since there are three forces acting at a point, the resultant can be written as this, the summation of all the forces, which is force TAC vector plus the T a B vector plus the P vector. You can check. So this is the resultant for them all. The summation of the forces is going to be this way. So we can now say F resultant is equal to, let's bring in the expression for each of the forces. T A C was given us TAC multiplying negative 48i on 65. Are we okay? Then we also have plus 25 on 65j minus 36 on 65k. This is for TAC. Now plus TAB, the expression, that's equation 2, and that was equal to 144 negative I plus 87J plus 72K. This is for TAB. Then for the P, we have this expression, minus PG, this way. Are we okay? So now we can group like terms, all the i on one side and all the j on one side. That will be very simple. So I'm going to pick them from one side. Are we good? So let's group like terms. Can we say f resultant is equal to 
for the i, this is going to be negative 48i on 65 multiplied by the TAC. Are we good? There's another i here, which is negative 144. Is that true? I. Now, plus, I'll go to the J. There is a J here, which is 25 on 65J by multiplying the TAC. There's another J, which is plus 87J this way. And the P is also in J, so we can add it to our expression. The J, which is negative PG for that. Now we can consider the K aspect plus the K. There is a negative 36 on 65 TAC. Are we good? here for the k then another k here which is plus 72k this way very simple so looking at the question you can go back and check the question it says that the resultant the resultant is directed along the oa and the OA is the axis for the X axis. Are we okay? This means that the resultant is lying on the axis OA, meaning all of the other axes being Y and Z are all equal to zero. This is what it means. If for the 3D resolution, the resultant is directed along a particular axis, here OA, the boom, which is on the X axis, meaning the y z axis there's no resultant over there mean is equal to zero so if we've grouped like terms and those directed along the i which is the x and we have it and those on the j and the z are equal to zero then i can pick this part and equate it to zero to find my unknown so from from that part negative 36 on 65 TAC plus 72, which is the Z as is, it is still going to be equal to zero. I can find TAC from here. So here TAC is going to be 72 multiplying 65 on 36, and that is going to give me an answer of 130 newtons. So the question asked for TAC, tension in AC cable. And from here, maybe the understanding should fall here. Once the resultant is directed along a particular axis, we can equate the other axis to zero. So if I've expressed this, so this is for the I, meaning on the X, this is for the J, the Y, and this is for the K, the Z. I can pick any of them and equate it to zero for this. But if I pick the Y, I have P unknown here. So I have to pick for the Z. Now that you know the value of TAC, you can put it in and find P by equating this to zero. And you can also find that. But the question was interested in finding tension AC. So we have 130 Newton as the tension in cable AC. Thank you for watching this episode. Like our videos and subscribe to the channel.